Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollard. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we gather to celebrate this fifth Sunday of the year, we hear how Jesus calls his disciples, and so too the Lord calls us. For the times perhaps we have not given attention to God's voice, let's ask the Lord now for mercy and forgiveness, but most especially, the ability to hear God speaking to us. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings, and one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphim to me, having in his hand a burning coal, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sins forgiven. 
and I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the presence of the angels, I praise you, O Lord. In the presence of the angels, I praise you, O Lord. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I praise you. I bow down toward your holy temple. In the, the presence, presence of, of the, the angels, angels, I praise, I praise you, you, O Lord. Lord. I give thanks to your name for your merciful love and your faithfulness. You have exalted your name and your promise over all. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased the strength of my soul. In the, in presence, the presence of, of the, the angels, angels, I, I praise, will praise you, O Lord. Lord. All earth's kings shall thank you, O Lord. When they hear the words of your mouth, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. How great is the glory of the Lord. In, your in the presence, presence of the of angels, angels, I praise, praise you, you, O Lord. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will accomplish this for me. O Lord, your merciful love is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. In, in the presence, presence of the angels, I praise, praise you, O Lord. Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I would remind you in what terms I preached to you the gospel, which you received, in which you stand, by which you are saved, if you hold it fast, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brethren at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God which is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach and so you believed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Follow me, says the Lord, and I will make you fishers of men. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, while the people pressed upon Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down, and he taught the people from the boat. And when he had ceased speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great shoal of fish, and as their nets were breaking, 
they beckon to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats, so they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. Henceforth you will be catching people. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you to picture the Sea of Galilee. I've had the privilege of being able to stand at the edge of that sea. It is a beautiful place surrounded by mountains. The Sea of Galilee is a freshwater lake about 20 kilometers long and more or less about 9 kilometers wide. It's about 680 feet below sea level and is probably only about 200 feet deep. And fishing was and still is, even if you visit there, an important industry on that lake. The sea is surrounded by these high hills on all sides, separates different parts of the geography of the Holy Land. And this sea is also called the Lake of Genesaret or the Lake of Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee. And geographically, Jesus' preaching centered around this sea. And according to all the synoptics, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus called his first disciples away from their fishing fleets on this sea, where today's event that we hear about in the gospel takes place. If you look carefully at the New Testament, you will notice that the sea represents a place of conversion. On the sea, nothing happens normally. It's always in an abrupt way, a marvelous or a difficult way. Some of the most dramatic miracles of Jesus take place on this very sea. Jesus calms a storm on the sea. Jesus walks on water on the sea. And after his resurrection, it is on the shore of the sea that we hear in John's Gospel Jesus making a braai to feed his disciples. In today's Gospel, Jesus is preaching on the shore of the sea, and we hear that the crowds are pressing on him, and so he hops in a boat to give himself space to be able to teach them. And then we are told at the end, he says to Simon, throw out your nets. And Simon says, we have caught nothing all night. They seem to be the weary words of a veteran fisherman who knew how frustrating the sea and fishing could be. But there was something about this well-spoken Galilean that led Peter to react, to want to comply to what Jesus asks of him. Imagine, he's the professional fisherman. What does Jesus know who tells him to throw out his net? Despite the frustration, perhaps, of a night-long toil, Simon's willingness to follow Jesus' suggestion and to put the nets out into that deeper water prepares for all that happens next. I wonder in our own lives if we too have moments where we feel weary, perhaps tired of the routines of daily life. Maybe we, like Simon, want to give up. And yet, Maybe there are times we notice too when we feel exactly as Simon does, 
somebody nudges us or invites us or even maybe instructs us to do something. And maybe that's not someone from outside, but it could be the inner voice that says to us, just do this or that at this moment. Give it another try. Persevere. I wonder if you can identify one such moment in your own life. And notice what happens after that. This miraculous catch takes place. A whole school of fish, we are told, straining the nets and the boat to breaking point. Peter sinks to his knees in front of Jesus, this mysterious figure, and says to him, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. This could mean a number of things. Leave me, Lord, I am a sinner. If only you knew who you were speaking to. My spirit is dull or my heart feels faint. I am a burden to my companions. Maybe even I'm a laughing stock to those around me. Just move away from me. And yet Jesus says to him, Do not be afraid, Simon. Now you will catch people. Jesus says to this discouraged fisherman, I shall not depart from you. I know who you are. I know your past. But that is not what is important to me. Because right now, I need your hands and your feet, your heart and your life. I have cast my nets wide and you happen to now be my best catch. In our lives too, the the Lord gives in abundance, perhaps in ways that we don't see or in ways that we don't expect. Maybe in ways which even seem to be unconventional, as is the story in the gospel. Is there such a moment in your own life, a moment when God has opened a door for you, when you least expected that to happen, offered you something that seemed unconventional even to your own way of thinking, a moment when God has maybe, through another, assured you of your goodness and asked you to do something new and therefore given you a newfound confidence as we see Peter is given. In Matthew and Mark's account of the scene, the fishermen who follow Jesus leave their nets, we are told, and their father. Notice that in Luke we are simply told they leave everything and follow him. You see, discipleship is powerful in the sense that it is a compelling invitation to something new, a call away from boring routine. Somehow our discipleship changes that routine into something else which is life-giving. It's a call away from frustration. It's a call to a new purpose. It's a call to a new way of living. Jesus invited these fishermen to be fishers of people, to be engaged in the struggle with the raging waters of a different kind of sea, the sea that was both their source of life and food, their livelihood, but the sea too that is mystery, at times threatening and at other times chaotic. The sea that could take their lives, but the sea that could also feed them. And maybe that's the third reflection for us today. In what way is Jesus calling me now? What challenge lies before me now at this point in my life and my journey of faith? What is the source for me now? What is the mystery for me at this moment? What might be the chaos or the threat? Put in another way, maybe, what is the weather like 
at this time in your own journey of life and faith? Where is Jesus now? Finally, I I want you to notice just one more little thing. The strong link between listening to the Lord and actually doing. Peter doesn't simply just make a profession of faith in that moment, but he's ready to do what the Lord asks him, even when it seems against his gut instinct, even when it seems unconventional. What is God saying to you? What are you willing to do today in response to what the Lord is saying to you? Does it go against your gut? Is it unconventional? Let's pray together now a profession of faith as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have heard God's word, and our God also listens to us. And so now we bring our prayers, our needs, before the Lord. For all of us gathered to pray today, that we, like Peter, would be open to receiving from God in ways that might seem unconventional or impossible to our way of thinking. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those engaged in difficult and dangerous work, that they would be assured that God is always with them when life seems threatening or chaotic. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us, that we may not be discouraged by our weariness and weakness, and that we might not feel demoralized by our failures. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who suffer with depression, that God will lift the darkness, give them new hope, and help them find support and acceptance. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who feel suicidal, that God's love will break into their wounded hearts so that they feel loved, accepted, and wanted in our communities, and in so doing, help them feel a reason to live. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us bring our own needs to God in silence. For these we pray. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, We give you thanks that we can make our prayers known to you, those we speak out loud, but the prayer too in the heart of each one, through Christ Jesus, your Son and our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be our prayer.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of our human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, we ask you to receive us and please bring us from the whole contract hearts, which we have with us. Cleanse us of all our sin. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, Holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and giving you thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, You have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of Jesus, your Son. Confirm us in a bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, and Butti, our Bishop, with all other bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people. Granted, all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing 
their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom the power, and glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's pray for a moment for peace in our own hearts, in our families and communities, in our society and all those places in the world where there is no peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one cup, grant us, we pray, as to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.